It's Super Videos back at you for another video. This is going to be my review and discussion for 707, which was called Sing Me a Song. So, to start with Michonne walking the road and killing a bunch of walkers, at first I just didn't understand what she was doing and I just thought she was lost, but uh, we saw later on what she was really doing and I think it's really cool that she's back, that we get to see Michonne's more badass side, so I love seeing that in this episode. Then we have Aaron and Rick being out on the run, and we see them spot something, and then we realize later on in the episode that there is at least one person or a group of people that are hiding, and they have scavenged a lot of supplies, and they have a lot of supplies, but they have like a trap. So in order to get to those supplies, you have to cross this pond that has all of these walkers in it. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Rick and Aaron actually get there. But I think that it's really cool that we get to see characters that we haven't seen before and they're not actually part of the communities that we've seen, just to see people out on their own. I love seeing that. So that was great as well. Then we get to the meat of the story, which is basically the point where Jesus and Carl are in the truck. They're making their way to the sanctuary. And most of the great moments from this episode actually happen at the sanctuary, which is pretty cool to see. And being a comic reader, a lot of the stuff from the comics actually came to life in this episode, and I loved seeing those moments. So we have Jesus and Carl in the truck. Jesus says we've got close enough, then we can just track the truck. And he says, I'm going to jump out. And Carl tells him, you do it first, show me how to do it. And then Jesus jumps, but Carl doesn't. So Carl basically tricks Jesus. And I love how Jesus acknowledges that Carl was smart and that he outplayed him. So that was very cool to see as well. And then, of course, we have Carl in the truck. They get to the sanctuary and... Carl is hiding, he finds this machine gun, which is pretty insane, and it's like exactly from the comics. What's interesting is that we can actually hear Negan in the background, so we know Negan is there, and it's cool to see that. And then we see one of the guys just come in, try to take a box, he drops it, he sees Carl, Carl shoots him down, which was pretty epic, I loved seeing that. And then Carl jumps out and says, take me to Negan and I won't kill any of you. So. We see a badass Carl, and I love that. And we have Negan, who is very intrigued by Carl's actions. And it's cool because even though he acts like he's not scared and he's keeping his image, he's still hiding behind one of the saviors, so using one of the saviors as shield. So just in case Carl shoots again, he doesn't shoot Negan. So that was pretty cool as well. And then, of course, Carl being the irrational person he is and kind of not thinking all the way through what he's going to do. He shoots more saviors, and that's when Dwight tackles him down. But in the comics, Dwight actually kind of kicks him around a little bit, but in the show, they didn't do that. I like the way they did that. They stayed true to the comics for the most part for this part. I love that. And then we see that Daryl actually sees Carl. So Daryl knows that Carl ended up at the sanctuary somehow, so he's kind of confused a little bit and then we have the camera zoom out and then we have a full view of the sanctuary and I love the way they have the sanctuary I don't know if that's CGI or if it's real but it looks exactly like the comics I'm pretty sure it's CGI but I loved seeing that and it's like another panel from the comics just came to life so that was very cool and then we have Negan's conversation with Carl telling him don't shatter my image of you. I think you're a badass. Don't act scared. So that was very cool to see as well. And something like that happened in the comics as well. Then we have Negan giving Carl a tour of the sanctuary, basically. So he takes him inside. All of the saviors are kneeling down. So that's very cool as well. And then we have Negan's mini speech. So he basically tells them that they have free vegetables for you know, the day and that they don't need points for it. So he's basically sugarcoating his image in front of Carl. So that was kind of interesting to see as well. And then going from there, we have Negan showing Carl his wives and joking about it to Carl, saying that you're allowed to look at their titties or something like that. That was very cool as well. And it's just like Negan's sense of humor is out of this world in this episode. There's a lot of great Negan moments in this episode. So then 
we have the other meat of the story, which is the Amber Mark situation. So we have Negan talking to Sherry about what happened with Amber and Mark. And then, of course, Sherry spills the beans. She tells Negan about the situation, what happened with Amber and Mark. And then Negan tells them to get the iron ready. That's the most powerful scene from this whole episode, in my opinion. And then at Alexandria, we have Spencer and Rosita kind of talking about the saviors and Spencer is referring to it as tax, that we're giving them tax. And then Rosita, of course, doesn't believe so. She wants to take revenge. She wants the bullet that Eugene is going to make her. And she just can't wait to take revenge on Negan. And she doesn't want to kneel to the saviors and pay up to them. And we are seeing a lot of build up with Spencer in this episode because even there, He's saying that he could do things better than Rick. And later on, he even admits that he hates Rick. But I think there's a lot of this buildup that is going to pay up later. And it's most likely the next episode. And I am so excited to see that moment come to life as well. For comic readers, you know what I'm talking about. But I just think that Spencer, even though he acts like he can do everything and he knows how to do everything. He doesn't have the guts to do half of those things. Then there's another part where we have the conversation between Gabriel and Spencer. I actually love Gabriel's mini speech in this scene to Spencer saying that Rick is not perfect, but he's saved a lot of people. There were a lot of people who had been killed, but he's saved a lot of people. I'm loving Father Gabriel in this episode. And even before this episode, I think it was episode four where he lied to Negan about Maggie being dead. That's one of the things that made me fall in love with Father Gabriel's character a little bit more. And in this episode, it just goes beyond that. And I just love to see more from Father Gabriel. I think the actor playing Father Gabriel is fantastic. And I think there's a lot of potential for his character. In the comics, I think he was underutilized. But in the show, I'm glad that they're giving him a little bit more spotlight. And then back at the sanctuary, we have Negan talking to Carl about his bandage and basically Negan making fun of it and saying that it's like getting a gift but not seeing inside of it. And he forces Carl to take off his bandage and then we see the wound, we see the eye socket. It's disgusting to be honest and that's exactly what Negan says as well but he hurts Carl's feelings and we have this sentimental side of Negan a little bit. He says it's easy to forget that you're just a kid. And then we have Carl crying and Negan is kind of like, I'm sorry and apologizing to him and everything like that. But I just love that comic moment coming to life as well. And just the whole conversation between Negan and Carl in this specific scene. So that was very exciting and cool to see. It was very epic to kind of see the panels in the comic come to life. And then... Of course, we have another great comic moment. We have Fat Joey bringing Lucille to Negan and saying, you left it by the truck. And then Negan says, yeah, this kid blowing up my men with a machine gun kind of distracted me. So he was kind of cool as well because it was straight from the comics. And we have Negan busting Joey's balls a little bit and saying that, did you treat her like a lady and things like that. So that was kind of like a comic relief given that we had that very dark and twisted scene with Negan making Carl take off his bandage. So that scene after kind of lightened up the mood a little bit. So I loved that. And again, that was straight from the comics. A lot of comic moments in this episode. So that was very cool to see. And then we have the other part of the comic moment where Negan kind of forces Carl to sing him a song. And then he's practicing Lucille and everything. And it's just twisted. Seeing it in the comic book, it doesn't have that effect. But seeing it in live action and having Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Negan kind of playing that and having Carl just singing with half of his eye being gone and then crying, just seeing it in live action. It was very twisted and it was dark in my opinion. It was more dark than the comics. In the comics, it didn't feel that dark. It felt like a little comic booky, which makes sense. But in the show, it was very dark. But it was very cool to see as well. And then going from there, we have Carl crying even more. He can't even finish the song, but it's cool to kind of see the dynamic between these two characters. And I think this episode was 
the moment for Carl to shine. And I definitely think he did that. I think both Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Chandler Riggs put a phenomenal performance in this episode. And I loved it. I loved every single bit of Negan and Carl together. And then going from there, we have Negan going to punish Mark for getting back with Amber. And we have that epic speech from the comics. And I actually did speculate that those two will be exactly together because that's what happened in the comics. So we have Negan saying, we provide security, we are the saviors, there are rules, things like that. And I think that speech was very powerful. You may not agree with the things he's saying and he may be brutal, he may be basically a dictator, but that speech was powerful. I think every leader kind of has a way of keeping people in line. For Negan, that's his way, and it was very powerful. And even after that, with the iron to the face for Mark, it was very brutal, it was dark. It was actually gross, to be honest, seeing that iron hit the face and actually seeing Negan take it off and some of the flesh is still hanging from the iron. So it was very twisted, very dark, very gruesome, but... I think it was powerful in telling the story. It was very powerful for that. And then we have Spencer being as lucky as he is, finding supplies, bringing it back to Alexandria. So that was kind of cool to see as well. And there is something cool because if you take a look, Spencer gets this blood on his face and you can actually see it when he's back at Alexandria. And that actually reminds me a lot of something that happens back at Alexandria when they return. So it's very cool, and I think it is an Easter egg for that. So if you're a comic reader, you actually do know what I'm talking about, so it's pretty cool. And then we have Eugene and Rosita at the ammunition factory. We have Eugene kind of not wanting to do it and kind of being scared and saying that they have the numbers. Abraham was right, they have the numbers and things like that. But we have Rosita saying that I'll pay the price if there's a price, but this is what I have to do. I have to kill him. And saying that, be useful for once. So he was kind of harsh on Eugene in this episode, but overall I liked the scene between them. And then back at the sanctuary, we have another powerful scene between Negan and Carl. We have Negan kind of just sitting there writing something. I don't know what he's writing, but then Carl tells him, why haven't you killed me? It's because you can't. If you wanted to kill me, you would have done it by now. And we have this great dialogue with Carl that I love. I think Chandler Riggs put on an amazing performance here and I just loved it. And of course we have Negan agreeing that he's not going to do anything to Carl so he takes him back and when they're actually outside the gates of the sanctuary we have Daryl kind of threatening Negan a little bit and then of course Negan tells Dwight to put Daryl back in his box so basically get him to listen to Easy Street again I guess. And then we have Negan kind of flipping off Daryl, so that was cool as well. But then what's very interesting is that as the camera pans out, we have Jesus who's on top of the truck, so he hasn't left. So it's cool because we actually get to see that Jesus, even at this point, he hasn't gave up on Carl, even though Carl kind of tricked him and left, but he hasn't. And given that these characters are really not that close, it's cool to see how Jesus really cares about people. And he actually feels a bit responsible. And if anything is to happen to Carl, he's not going to forgive himself. So he's kind of chilling, staying there, and making sure that Carl gets back safely. And then we have a moment where Daryl looks up at the truck. But I don't know if he sees Jesus at that moment or not, but it's very cool. And I'm very interested to see what happens between Jesus and Daryl if he's going to help him escape. Because if you take a look at what happens next... We have Daryl back in the cell, but then someone kind of slips a note under the door and the note says, go now. I don't know if it was Jesus who put that, if it was Dwight or if it was Sherry. So it's very cool to see how that kind of plays out because we have like a moment of hope that Daryl might escape. So that's very cool because half the season he's been in the cell. So it's actually cool to see him escape. So I'm very excited to see that. And then... We have, of course, with Michonne blocking the road and seeing the badass side of Michonne because she takes one of the saviors hostage and tells her to take her to Negan. Now, we don't know what her plan is, but whatever it is, I think Michonne is a character that would not do anything if she doesn't have a plan. So she definitely must have a plan. 
And I'm very excited to see what her plan is. And of course, we have Negan taking Carl back. And we have that crazy scene between Olivia and Negan. Negan kind of hitting on her and saying that I want to screw your brains out and everything. And then <laughs> Olivia slaps him in the face. And it surprises Negan. It surprised me. It was very funny. And I love Negan's quote after that. He says, that made me like you 50% more. That was very cool as well. We have Carl giving... Negan a tour of his house much like Negan gave Carl a tour of the sanctuary and this scene was very weird I gotta be honest with you this scene was very weird the way it was shot and everything with the music and everything like that but I guess they wanted a lighter mood for the end of the episode because for one this episode was dark overall and the next episode seems to be dark as well so they just wanted a little lighter mood for the end of this episode so that it's a great transition to the next episode. So I can see why they did it, but it just felt a little weird. And then we have the moment that kind of shocked me. We have Negan seeing Judith and then holding Judith and everything like that. And Judith is kind of like sitting on his lap by the end of the episode and they're just chilling there. And it's just crazy. We actually see a lighter side of Negan in this part as well. And it just feels a little weird. I don't know. I don't know how Rick is going to react to Negan if he sees Negan holding Judith. Overall, I actually loved this episode. I think it's one of the greatest episodes in this half season. It may be the first, depending on what episode 8 offers. It may be the best episode for this half season. Right now, I'm stuck between... 701 and 707 so one of those definitely needs to go to the top in terms of a ranking but overall i would give this episode a high grade rating i loved it a lot of great comic moments and it really set up some great story arcs and some great build-up for the next episode and what's to come for the next season that's it for this video thanks for watching i'll be back for another video